Good afternoon, Mr Heath. Thank you for coming along to talk to us this afternoon. First of all, could I ask you, a few weeks ago, Chris Fox, the president of Imperial College Union, presented you with a petition protesting against the increase in fees for overseas students. This petition was also signed by about 100 members of staff. Could I ask you, what are your views on this issue? Yes, uh, I told the president I was very impressed with the petition, and uh, particularly because so many other staff had signed at the same time. Of course, I see a large number of universities, and I've had a very considerable number of um, letters about this, and it has been the case with all of them. They've been extremely well argued. Uh, the facts have been set out, the consequences which uh, are estimated to happen, and so on. My own view is that in the universities we ought to have as many foreign students as we can. I look back to my own time when I was at Oxford, and one of the things one gained was uh, uh, meeting people from all walks of life. Uh, I came from a grammar school, living on the coast. Well, it was a fairly limited experience, but once one got to mix with other people at the university, it was all quite different. And then the same thing applied. We had a very large number of people who came from overseas. The college still does. Uh, you do here in Imperial College. And this is part of university life, is of benefit to everybody, not only to the people who come from overseas. There is also the material side of it, which is that when people come to this country, to a university, they get a very high quality education. When they get back to their own countries, they look to us. I hope they look for a whole variety of things for our political stability, but also because they want to buy our goods and they want to continue with our professional qualifications and so on. And this is a very great advantage to this country. So for all of those reasons, uh, I was in sympathy with the petition and I want to see the foreign students here in this country. Mm. Yes. Well, of course, um, uh, cuts could affect all students, not just the overseas. Um, do you feel that cuts should not be made in higher education? Well, it's very difficult to be as dogmatic as that. Yes. But um, what I feel about education, I've always taken this view for the last 30 years in politics, what I feel about education is this, that uh, when you're making cuts in government expenditure, you look first of all for waste. Well, you ought to be looking for that the whole time. You can improve your techniques for dealing with waste. Secondly, you can look for the things which you can postpone, which may be inconvenient, may be unpleasant, but don't have any really lasting effect. Now, the third thing is the point about education, that if you cut in education, you are having an impact on a generation which can never be replaced. And therefore, I think that as far as education is concerned, if you can find waste or if you can find means of improving techniques and economizing that way, well and good, of course. But one must always be careful never to damage the prospects of any individual for the time which he would normally be educated. Yes, yeah, so you'd prefer to see the cuts made in selective areas rather than sweeping right across yes, the board? Yes, indeed. Mm. Yes. Well, can I ask you then, do other backbenchers share your view on this? Or is this a I, think quite a, I think quite a, do a lot too, yes. Mm -hmm. Fine. Well, now, if I could move on to ask you a little bit on a more personal note. Is life very different for you now uh, as a backbencher than it was several years ago when you were Prime Minister? Well, it's far busier, for one thing. Uh, <laughs> secondly, I find that uh, I travel much more. Uh, this does give me the opportunity of seeing things at first hand. I've always believed in finding out things for myself and not just reading about them. Uh, so I've seen an enormous amount of the world in the last five years. I suppose the other difference is that when you're Prime Minister, you have a large staff at your command, and uh, whatever ideas you have, they can follow them up. Uh, you have government departments who can pursue things and give you st statistics and everything else you want. When uh, you're not in office, you haven't got that. And so it means that uh, you have to cut back a great deal on the sort of things you'd like to pursue, and it becomes more difficult to get all the information you want. Yes. Uh <clears throat> and also then, is, is it very difficult to move from being the leader of a party to, if you'll pardon the expression, to being an ordinary member? Well, uh, if you're a leader of a party, you carry responsibilities. Uh, you have to make decisions uh, and you have to hold a party together, which I succeeded in doing for 10 years. When you're uh, on the back benches, you haven't got those responsibilities. Uh, but of course, it's also true that uh, you may like to have those responsibilities, so that's the difference. Yes. Of course, much has been made uh, in the past uh, of your relationship with the Prime Minister, Mr. Margaret Thatcher. Could you tell us what is the relationship? It, much has been made that it, um, of hostility between the two of you. Well, uh, as far as relationships, because I never discuss personal matters actually yes. with, with my colleagues. I never have done. Uh, but uh, I'm a backbencher and she's the leader of the party. That's the relationship. 
Well, thank you very much indeed, Mr Heath, for coming along.